<clears throat> Thanks a lot. Great turnout today. Um, what I'd like to do is, is talk to you not only about um, potentially what environmental biotechnology can do to help us, but in what you don't hear quite often is things that happen that suggest we could do it better or we may have done it wrong. So um, let me give you some of those examples and um, some actual case studies. First of all, the problem. 73 million US citizens live within four miles of a Superfund site. This is our worst toxic waste sites, okay? And um, these are the ones that are gonna require immediate cleanup. They have multiple risk factors associated with them, et cetera. Um, in fact, four million US citizens live within one mile of a Superfund site, and we actually have several Superfund sites in the Bay Area here. The sources for these contaminations um, are a myriad, and in fact, you can see um, in this cartoon basically gas tanks, uh, leachate from landfills, refuge, um, sludge applications, uh, desiccation, which allows material to get into the subsurface in direct injection, um, seepage basins, tanks, leaking, sewer lines, and of course this includes things like fluorinated solvents, oil, MTBE, this oxidizing agent that we find in, in gasoline. Um, <clears throat> and then of course a lot of the radionuclides that are involved in DOE sites and uh, even plutonium and things like this that are found at some of the sites. The cost, and this is probably a low estimate, is going to cost us at least $1.7 trillion, and that number seems to be going upwards. Especially now as we're finding that concentrations of some chemicals, even areas that we've cleaned up, um, can basically affect endocrine systems at parts per trillion concentrations. So they're endocrine disruptors. Um, they can cause um, children to have sexual characteristics when they're only um, two years old, three years old. Um, they're contaminating milk, water, etc. And there's a, a lot of potential for this to be the next um, environmental nightmare. Okay, let's look at a couple of really dramatic cases that actually helped galvanize environmental um, legislation. One of those was the Moco Cadiz bill, okay? And this was 227,000 tons of heavy crude that was spilled off the Normandy coast about uh, 29 years ago. Um, the spill was so large that they decided they will only treat the areas that were heavily impacted. And large areas in remote parts of the coast were basically abandoned. The best available treatment at the time was detergents and dispersants. And so they added that to the coastlines. Now, the spill was actually the impetus for a variety of international cleanup and tanker regulations, going to double hauled tanks and things like this. So that was a good thing. However, ecological studies done 10 and 20 years post-spill have now demonstrated to us that the treated areas have not yet recovered, okay? And it's been almost 30 years. Yet the untreated areas recovered in less than five years, okay? 